Leuven is actually a very small city, Belgium having 10 million inhabitants. Leuven only has 90,000 inhabitants. Next to that we have 30,000 students. After the university was founded in 1425, we had a university hospital in the city of Leuven in 1426, one year later. After 1970, we moved all the medicine activities to the Gasthausberg with uh, about 2,000 beds, more than 100,000 admissions per year, with outpatient clinic that is going up to 700,000 patients per year. Urology, we are having about 200, 250 radical prostatectomies a year. We do between 70 and 100 cystectomies. We have the same amount of renal cancers and we have an enormous amount of female and functional urological and reconstructive surgeries. It's actually these high volumes that have permitted to also have scientific output, clinical papers, clinical research. My uh, research task consists in supervising two research lines, one on ion channel research, especially TRIP channels, which are transient receptor potential channels. Our lab specializes in the role of these receptors in bladder sensation and bladder function. We are actually looking for new pharmaceutical targets. This will take some more years, but uh, this is ongoing research and we had recently some very interesting and promising results in the adipose-derived uh, stem cell lab, we are looking for the treatment of erectile dysfunction and there we are reaching actually the point where we could move into the clinic. During a research stay in the University of California in San Francisco, I was educated in uh, the development of stem cell techniques and there we published the first paper examining stem cell therapy with mesenchymal stem cells in a rat model of erectile dysfunction for radical prostatectomy. Back in Leuven, we actually paired up with a team from Baltimore, Professor Bivalacqua and Johns Hopkins, and a team from Milan, Professor Peter Hedlund in San Raffaele, to develop stem cell therapy for Peyronie's disease. And here we were also able to publish the first paper on stem cell treatment for Peyronie's disease. The way to go is, of course, to translate these basic science animal studies into the human clinical situations, and for that we need phase one phase two and phase three trials, which are currently uh, running throughout Europe and the US, and uh, the results of which are anticipated to be published in uh, high-impact journals very soon. The university over the last decades has tried to build a health science campus right next to the academic university. And this science health campus has now grown into a, a large facility of hundreds of laboratories that are doing several types of, of research. And part of them are working on cancer. And they are looking at all levels, at uh, the level of the patients, at the level of the organs, of the cells, of the molecules. For research in urology, we have the clinical laboratories here, in the clinical facilities here in the University Hospital. And we are collaborating with, for instance, our molecular and technology laboratory that is working on basic aspects of how molecules are acting in the cells. So it is through these uh, the closeness of the, the laboratories and the, the intense discussions between the clinicians and the basic researchers that we can come to very important translational uh, questions and solutions. We are focusing on high-risk prostate cancer, which is a group of patients at highest risk of dying from the disease. We feel that by working intensively together with the labs, we've already made progress in a couple of years and we get better insight in what is really lethal prostate cancer. Once we can define this, we can avoid a necessary surgery in patients who don't really need surgery, or we can find ways to better target treatment to those patients needing this treatment the most. We are already on to certain pathways which may be involved in progression of prostate cancer, which we can target with novel drugs. We're just about to start a huge prospective study studying the role of PSMA PET-CT in lymph node staging prior to surgery and also using PSMA PET-CT as a way of detecting oligometastatic disease at early PSA rise after local treatment. We are clearly seeing that it performs better than choline PET-CT. We are using this scan now in early PSA rise after surgery. We are detecting more and more often 
small positive lymph nodes, which is still amenable for local metastasis-directed treatment. We have the pediatric urology, we have the female and functional urology, the reconstructive urology, we have endoscopic urology, we have robot surgery, we have oncology. We are a recognized and certified European Board of Urology Training Center and we have obtained a subspecialty certification by the European Board of Urology for bladder cancer, kidney cancer, prostate cancer and for female functional reconstructive urology. We have an international name. We attract more than 300 fellows, visitors from all around the world. It was really important for me to be trained in a big center in order to become skilled uh, in this particular field of urology, such as functional urology. To the future of the department and our activities, the first important point is the areas of subspecialty will become smaller and smaller and we need more sub-specialists really dedicated to one special small area. The second is uh, expansion of our translational research, having more uh, lab research, having our young people starting in the lab before they go for their clinical training. And the third important point is that we want our uh, multidisciplinary approach for our patients. This means that we work more and more together with the radiation oncologists, the medical oncologists, the psychologists, the pathologists, the radiologists. And these are the three most important future directions that I want to see realized.